Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss previous year geography mm -hmm. questions. Uh, UPSC previous year question from the year of 2011, so 2022. Um, this is first session. In this session we will be discussing around 40 questions. Okay. So we will see particularly how to eliminate options because geography is the thing which is very broad. So for uh, normal other optional students geography technical concept may be little bit difficult so we will particularly focus on elimination method so which may be useful okay so can we start so uh, which one of the following set of elements was primarily responsible for the origin of life on earth see it's actually very basic question oxygen evolved later Correct. So, when new organisms evolved, the photosynthesis process evolved, oxygen was added. So, it is not in the previous time. So, oxygen evolved later. So, we can eliminate oxygen here. So, if you eliminate oxygen, option A and C can be eliminated easily. So, just uh, two options left, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen and potassium. So, obviously, it is nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen and nitrogen is the exact answer. So, one option B. I think it is 2011 question. Okay. So, second, consider the following statements. Earth magnetic field. Earth magnetic field has reversed every few thousand years. When the earth was created more than 4000 million years ago, there was 54 percentage oxygen and no carbon dioxide. When living organisms originated, they modified the early atmosphere. The earth magnetic field has reversed every few thousand years. These are the three keywords. Okay. So, now coming back to the options. The third statement is very easy, right? Just now we have discussed when living organisms originated, particularly due to photosynthesis and other factors, the earlier composition of atmosphere was changed, which became conducive for later evolution. So, the third statement is definitely true. So, you can eliminate option 1, where there is no option 3. So, just the three options. So, now our probability increased to 25 from 25 to 33 percentage. We have eliminated one option. Second, when the earth has created, uh, was created more than 4000 million years ago, there was 54 percentage oxygen and no carbon dioxide. See again, this is extreme statement. I am not mentioning that if, if there is any extreme statement, it is definitely wrong. But if there is any extreme statement, we have to rethink, we have to revisit that particular statement again. Actually, early atmosphere have more carbon dioxide, later oxygen evolved. So, second statement is definitely wrong. So, we can eliminate second statement. So, we have left with just one statement. It is option CC for Chennai. Okay. So, we did not see even first option, how, whether earth magnetic field has reversed or it is normal throughout the time. See, it is reversed, but we did not see that particular option. We went for elimination and we have arrived into the op correct option, option C. The earth magnetic field has reversed, yes, every 200,000 to 300,000 years, earth magnetic field has reversed. So, that is the fact. So, first statement is true, third statement is true, but second statement it is false. So, second option C, okay, so third. Which of the following phenomena might have influenced the evolution of organisms? See, can you understand the question? So, first three questions is mostly about evolution, origin of your from Big Bang theory you have to study. It is in our NCRT itself, okay, 11th NCRT. So, which of the following phenomena might have influenced the evolution of organisms? Continental drift and glacial cycles, it is true. Option C, both 1 and 2 select the correct answer. See, most of the time you look for whether sometime if they ask select the uh, which option is not correct or sometime they ask which of uh, which option is correct. So, you once go through these statements. Okay. So, which of the following phenomena continental drift and glacial cycles bo both option is correct. For example, initially we know initially there is Pangea surrounded by water body Panthalassa. Pangea broke into two Laurasia Gondwana. Gondwana continents further divided into many continents. For example, South Africa, uh, sorry, South America, Africa, India, Australia, Antarctica. So, with the movement of uh, plates, with the movement of continents, evolution of organisms happen. For example, Australia, it is isolated for a longer period of time. So, the species in Australia is very unique. So, evolution of species, yeah, uh, continental drift is the important factor plus glacial cycle. See. Uh, the last period is tertiary period. Currently, we are living in quaternary period. 
quaternary period can be divided into two epochs one it is holocene and second pleistocene pleistocene is the last ice age holocene is the present warm age so when earth move from pleistocene to holocene epoch from ice age to warm age period there is evolution of many organism at the same time there was extinction of organisms also the earth has experienced five major mass extinctions before so glacial cycle has a role definitely so second option is also correct so three option c okay four consider the following uh, electromagnetic radiation geothermal energy gravitational force plate movements rotation of earth revolution of earth which of the following are responsible for bringing dynamic changes on the surface of earth see in this uh, electromagnetic radiation plays a major role yes it plays a major role it impacts radiation uh, temperature changes which have an impact on metamorphism or weathering process so definitely geothermal energy yeah magmatic eruption and lava flow created changes in earth landform gravitational force yes it impact mass movements particularly due to gravity it impacts mass movements yes it is definitely true for example landslides plate movements yeah obviously there is we know about convergent plate boundary divergent plate boundary transform so the movement of plates definitely have an impact on surface uh, for example recent if it is current affairs uh, turkey and syria earthquake uh, because of anatolian plate it is in the tri junction arabian plate and eurasian plate so plate movements have definitely have an impact rotation of earth and revolution of earth is the key term so you can eliminate option a and d okay so you have left with only two options 1 2 3 4 and 1 2 3 4 5 6 now the tricky part is rotation of earth or revolution of earth make an impact on the surface of earth so most probably you may choose option a or sometime you may choose option d according to upsc official answer key it is option d d for delhi okay so rotation of earth and revolution of earth rotation of earth have an impact on wind movement have an impact on ocean currents have an impact on sunlight at the same time revolution of earth will tilt in its axis have an impact on seasonal effects for example there is a change in intensity of sunlight across space uh, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere there is a difference which may also have an impact so wind movement ocean currents or sunlight variation due to rotation and revolution of earth making changes at the earth surface so four option d d for delhi so so far we have discussed very basics the first evolution of organism second it is about magnetic field and early atmosphere third evolution of organism fourth geomorphology concept so okay so fifth concept this is map based question we can expect one or two map based question each and every year Uh, so which of the following pair is correctly matched okay so it is very easy actually if you know the answer atlas mountain is the correct answer so consider africa africa la north western part of africa we have atlas mountain morocco uh, tunisia these countries so atlas mountain north western africa it is true then what about abyssinian plateau it is in ethiopia guyana highlands it is in venezuela south america okwango basin also called as kalahari basin it is in botswana and the parts of namibia so five option b basic world map reading okay so five option b b for bombay six consider the following statements in india the himalayas are spread to over five states only okay so only extreme statements so himalayas are spread over five states only see actually if you understand the pattern himalayas extend from west to east from jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttarakhand even parts of punjab we have shivaliks plus uh, up bihar sikkim arunachal pradesh purvanchal so they, they didn't mention about uh, western himalayas it also includes eastern himalayas so it is definitely more than five states so first option is wrong you definitely know first statement is correct so first statement is wrong you can eliminate option a and option d so now your chance is 50 percentage you have eliminate two options now back to the question western ghats are spread over the five states only 
See, this is very significant because due to human impact, ecological destruction, western impacts is undergoing major changes. Kasturi Rangan report particularly on Himalayan ecosystem and western guards is also very relevant particularly for current affairs. So now coming back to the point, western guards are spread over 5 states only, it is not 5 states, it is 6 states. For example, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, 6 states. So it is not 5 states, so second statement is wrong. So we can eliminate option C, so only option left is option B, 3 only. So now coming back to this statement, Pulikat Lake is spread over two states only. Yes, it is spread over two states, one it is Andhra and second it is southern state, it is Tamil Nadu. So Pulikat Lake, so that is Palavir Kadiri in Tamil. So six option B, B for Bombay. It's a very simple basic map reading. Seven, with reference to water on the planet, Consider the following statements. The amount of water in rivers and lakes is more than the amount of water in, at ground, amount of ground water. The amount of water in polar and ice caps and glaciers is more than the amount of ground water. See, we have to know a very basic fact. 97 percentage we have ocean. Nearly 2, per, two to 3 percentage we have fresh water source. In this 2 percentage of fresh water, it is in ice caps, glaciers. 0.68 percentage, it is as ground water. So, less than 0.01 percentage, we have surface drainage as rivers, lakes, etc. So, now coming back to the statement, the amount of water in rivers and lakes is more than the amount of ground water, it is definitely false. So, first statement is wrong. Second statement, the amount of water in polar and ice cap, polar ice caps and glaciers is more than the amount of ground water. Yes, it is true. So, seven option B, two only. Simple statement, but this particular fact is very important. You have to remember. So, seven option B, B for Bombay. Eight, yeah, it is very important. Gandhi Kota Canyon, See, uh, we often know Grand Canyon in USA. Gandhikota Canyon, it is often referred as Grand Canyon of India. So, it is previous year question, recent question. Gandhi Gandhikota Canyon of South India was created by which of the following rivers? It is Pennar, Andhra Pradesh. It is in Kadapa district. So, okay. So, Gandhikota Canyon, River Pennar. Don't confuse with ten penna. It is different. Penna is different. So eight option C. Nine. This is also a very good question. Uh, Namacha Parva. Namacha Parva. It is in Gar Garhwal Himalayas, Nanda Devi, Kumaon Himalayas, Nakrik Sikkim Himalayas. So option one and two, two only, one and three, three only. Okay. Uh, see, very basic. If you learn about biosphere reserves, particularly UNESCO biosphere reserves or simply biosphere reserves. You may know No Creek Biosphere Reserve, it is in Meghalaya. Biosphere Reserve, Meghalaya, particularly which hills, na? Garo Hills. Okay. So, No Creek Himalayas is definitely not in Sikkim, it is in Meghalaya. No Creek, it is Biosphere Reserve, that is why it is very important also. So, No Creek, it is not Sikkim Himalayas, so definitely third option is wrong, so you can eliminate option C and option D. So, only we have left with uh, two options. So, 50 percentage probability. So, next uh, Nanda Devi in Kumavon Himalayas. Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve again. Nanda Devi uh, is the second highest peak after Kanjanjanga. Kanjanjanga is the highest peak in Indian control. Actually, it is K2, but it is in POK. So, Kanjanjanga is the highest peak in India, it is in Sikkim, second highest peak it is Nanda Devi. So, it is in Kumaon Himalayas, it is, it is in Kumaon Himalayas, Uttarkan Himachal Pradesh region. So, Nanda Devi, the second statement is correct. So, next, Namacha Parva, Garhwal Himalayas. See, actually, uh, we know about syntaxial bend, correct? So, Himadri terminates at syntaxial bend. At the two edges, we have two peaks. One it is Namacha Parva, and second it is sorry. One it is Nanga Parva, and second Namacha Parva. So Nanga Parva 
uh, it is in the western side namacha parva it is in the eastern side why nanga parvat is very important na indus turns into pakistan near Nama nanga parvat indus gorge brahmaputra turns into india near namacha parvat brahmaputra gorge is in namacha parvat Namacha Parvat, it is north of Arunachal Pradesh in Tibetan region. So, Namacha Parva is definitely not Garhwal Himalayas. Garhwal Himalayas, it is in Uttarkhand. So, Namacha Parva, the second statement is definitely, sorry, first statement is definitely wrong. So, only one option is correct. That is Nanda Devi. It is in Kumavon Himalayas. So, option B, B for Bombay. Okay, so, you just correlate your knowledge with the environment or history or economics or some other subjects you can eliminate options so 10 with reference to india consider the following statement it is very important considering our demand uh, monocyte is the source of rare earth monocyte contains thorium actually monocyte contains source of rare earth minerals and also it contains thorium so both option is correct so one and two is correct so we can eliminate option c now back to question so monocyte occurs naturally yes it occurs naturally in the entire indian coastal sands in india it is definitely not true it is extreme statement uh, it is uh, not true actually i will give you a statement but this is not true so third option is wrong so if you eliminate third option you will be left with just one option it is option one two and four we did not see fourth option itself in India, government bodies only can process or export monocyte. Yes, it is true. Actually, IREL, India Rare Earth Limited, under Department of Atomic Energy, is the only government body which have authority to process or export monocyte. So, fourth statement, it is correct. It is IREL, India Rare Earth Limited, under Department of Atomic Energy. Third, monocyte occurs naturally in the entire Indian coast. According to DAE, Department of Atomic Energy, only few states have monocyte deposits. It is uh, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and particularly Kerala, Tamil Nadu. So, these are the five states which have good amount of monocyte deposits and parts of Jharkhand, but in very few percent, very 0 0.02 something. So, parts of Jharkhand have monocyte deposits. So, only these states have good quantity of monocyte deposits, Odisha, AP, West Bengal, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So, it is not entire coastal region. So, third statement is wrong. So, this is very important actually monocyte thorium nuclear reactors and all other facts. So, 10 option B, B for Bombay. Okay. So, 11. In the northern hemisphere, the longest day of the year normally occurs in, see this is very, very basic question based on revolution, based on the apparent movement of sun, the northward movement of sun or southward movement of sun, uh, Uttarayan movement, Dakshinayan movement, correct? Uh? Say actually, uh, consider sun, the earth is revolving around sun in elliptical orbit, at some point March 21 and September the sun, lay, sun rays it is in equator we call it as equinox spring equinox autumn equinox but around june 21 the vertical sun rays it is in northern hemisphere the vertical sun rays reach extreme tropic of cancer december 22 it is around tropic of capricorn so june 21 summer solstice the northern hemisphere have longest day and shortest night correct so, June 21 has the longest day in Northern Hemisphere. So, June 21 is second half of the month of June. So, 11 option B. Very basic question, but they have twisted. So, in the Northern Hemisphere, the longest day of year, that is second half of the month of June, June 21, where the day will be longest, night will be the shortest. It is during March to June, it is the northward movement of Sun, Uttarayan movement, particularly from equator to Tropic of Cancer. So, 10 op 11 option B, 12, a layer of earth, a layer in the earth's atmosphere called ionosphere facilitates, re facilitates radio communication. So, they have given ionosphere facilitates radio communication, it is in our NCRT, very basic question. We know about layers of atmosphere, consider this is surface, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere and the exosphere. So, 5 layers, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere, thermosphere and the exosphere, 5 layers we know that. 
the presence of ozone causes the reflection of radio waves into the earth very basic question so ozone it is in the stratosphere so it is not in the ionosphere so second first statement is definitely wrong so first statement is wrong so answer cannot be one only or both one and two okay radio waves have a very long wavelength yes radio waves have a very long wavelength it is true but considering the question it is not supportive right radio waves are very long wavelength but how ionosphere facilitates radio communication so it is nowhere related to that so even though it is the second statement a uh, second statement is correct for the question it is not true so 12 option d d for delhi so ionosphere facilitates radio communication particularly the electrically charged particles called ions reflects radio waves that is the exact answer we know that actually so 12 option d neither one nor two even though second statement is correct it is not exactly relevant for the question so 12 option d 13 the jet aircrafts fly very easily and smoothly in the lower at stratosphere what could be the appropriate explanation there are no clouds or water vapor in the lower stratosphere and there are no vertical winds in the lower stratosphere both option is correct so it is option c to avoid turbulence generally jets jet aircrafts flow in the lower stratosphere so both options are correct so 13 option c particularly to avoid turbulence so 13 option c you can understand see 13th question 12th question it is from the same topic so if you understand just keep your focus on ncrts after completing ncrt you can go for reference book like gc lyons ncrt particularly 11th and 12th ncrt is most important 11th ncrt is particularly most important so variations in the length of day time and night time from season to season see they are asking variation in length of day just now we have discussed june 21 northern hemisphere experience longest day shortest night december northern hemisphere experience shortest night long sorry, sorry shortest day and longest night so we know that this change june 21 december 22 summer solstice winter solstice um equinox spring equinox autumn equinox we know that fact june 21 northern hemisphere longest day shortest night december 22 northern hemisphere shortest day longest night because sun's vertical sun rays will be in southern hemisphere around december so equinox exactly 12 hours of day 12 hours of night so variation in length of day time and night time from season to season are due to earth rotation causes day and night but not, not a fact earth revolution around the sun yes in an elliptical manner okay but revolution is not the exact answer revolution of earth on a tilted axis that is the important factor so option d 14 option d d for delhi same concept apparent movement of sun northward shifting of sun and south southward movement of sun 14 option d 15 again the same kind of question on 21st june the sun 21st june as we have discussed the sun's vertical sun rays will be moving will be in northern hemisphere it will be in tropic of cancer summer solstice the sun does not set below the horizon at the arctic or at the antarctic vertically overhead at the noon of equator no it is around march to september sun vertically over at the tropic of capricorn it is around december sun does not below uh, set below the horizon at the arctic circle is the correct answer arctic circle experience 6 months of continuous day at the same time during june month uh, during northward movement of sun antarctic circle experience continuous 6 months of night so in this category in this question it does not set below the horizon at the arctic circle so 15 option it is a same concept three question it is repeated okay 16 the increasing amount of carbon dioxide in the air is slowly rising the temperature of the atmosphere because of it absorbs so actually carbon dioxide greenhouse gas you know that so it is slowly rising the temperature of the atmosphere because it absorbs infrared radiation 16 option d infrared part of solar radiation see earth has generally uh, it exp- uh, short wave radiation when there is energy from sun when it is reflected back it is a long wave radiation it is reflected from the surface or from the atmosphere 
So, generally these long wave radiation infrared radiation it is observed by carbon dioxide which increases the average global temperature that is the major concern. Actually it is the protective layer greenhouse gases, but due to anthropogenic emissions we are thickening the carbon dioxide or the increasing the extent of uh, greenhouse gases which act as the uh, uh, we known about that particular topic right greenhouse effect. So, that is the major problem. So, answer the infrared part of solar radiation. So, 16 option D long wave radiation. Seventeen. Normally, the temperature decreases with the increase in height from the earth surface. Yes, we know that actually normal lapse rate for every 1 kilometer there will be an average reduction of minus 6.5 degree Celsius we call, we call it as normal lapse rate we know that. Uh, what is the reason ok so the atmosphere then first of all what is the reason for this temperature uh, reduction when you go to higher altitude now at the ground surface we have high density of air molecules at the top surface we have scattered air molecules due to many reasons particularly gravity and all other factors pull ground air molecules towards the ground. So, generally air molecules have high, will be have high density at the ground surface compared to the higher altitude. So, now back to the question the atmosphere can be heated upwards only from the earth surface yes it is true 17 next statement there is more moisture in the upper atmosphere actually there is more moisture in the lower atmosphere compared to the upper atmosphere. So, second statement is wrong. So, two options can be eliminated. So, the air is less dense in the upper atmosphere. Yes, we have discussed here at the ground surface we have high density of air molecule at the high higher altitudes we have scattered air molecules less density. So, the air is less dense in the upper atmosphere it is true. So, third option is definitely true. So, option it is C. So, option C C for Chennai the temperature can be heated upwards only from the earth surface we have discussed it before. Second, uh, there is more moisture in the upper atmosphere, it is definitely wrong, and third statement is correct. So, 17 option C, C for Chennai. 18. The annual, see, they are asking annual range of temperature, please pay attention. The annual range of temperature in the interior of continents is high, annual range in extremity in temperature, extreme high temperature or extreme low temperatures. So, range of temperature in the interior of continent is high as compared to coastal regions. What is the reason? So, if you consider India, we can take Delhi or any coastal city Kolkata, Chennai or Mumbai. So, compared to the coastal cities, interior part of the continents have extreme range of temperature. The reason is because of continentality effect continentality effect less influence of water and second factor conduction process due to conduction process land acquires heat faster at the same time it cools rapidly, but water due to convection process it will heat and cool very slowly. So, the thermal difference between land and water is the first only important factor. Second, variation variation in altitude between continents and the ocean. See, altitude can make a difference, but it is a highly localized factor, but whether it can create huge difference between continent and the oceans, it is not definitely true. Uh, presence of strong winds in the interior, that is also not true. Third, heavy rains in the interior as compared to the coast. Actually, it is reverse, right? Due to marine influence, coastal region will experience more rainfall compared to the interior parts. So, fourth option is definitely wrong. So, the option, only option is option A. Okay, so the annual range of temperature in the interior of continent is high because of thermal difference between land and water. We generally know about continentality character. So, particularly Delhi can be best example. So, 19 westerlies in southern hemisphere is stronger and persistent than in northern hemisphere. Okay, first of all we need to know westerly is a permanent wind system. So, we know four pressure belts equatorial low pressure belt, subtropical high pressure belt, subpolar low pressure belt and polar high pressure belt. So, uh, westerlies it is between subtropical high pressure belt 
and the subpolar low pressure belt it is both in northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere so southern hemisphere has less land mass as compared to the northern hemisphere yes it is true actually see the wind not only westerly is wind is affected by frictional force the frictional force is very less in water body compared to the land okay so which can reduce the velocity of wind so southern hemisphere has less land mass as compared to the northern hemisphere is definitely true because of less frictional force westerly speed is very very high so that is why we refer westerly in southern hemisphere as a roaring 40 furious 50s because of its wind speed in 40 degree latitude 50 degree latitude the velocity of westerlies is really high so first statement is correct second statement Coriolis force is high in southern hemisphere as compared to the northern hemisphere. See, we know Coriolis force will have an impact on each and every moving object, whether it can be a solid, liquid or gaseous substances. But there is no major difference between a northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, Coriolis force. First of all, Coriolis force, you know that it forms due to the rotation of Earth. So, okay, but in this, Coriolis force will have no impact. So, 19, option A. A only, okay. So, very important statement. Twenty. Consider the following statements. Again, westerly. Okay. So, consider the following statements. The wind which blow between thirty degree north and sixty degree south latitudes throughout the year are known as westerlies. Actually, when you are reading these kind of question with the pressure, exam pressure, most of the time we will fail to notice some important letters. See, actually it is, if according to this question, consider this is equator, 30 degree north, 60 degree south. So, this entire region have westerly's impact according to this question. We definitely know it is 30 degree north to 60 degree north, 30 degree south to 60 degree south, but they have given 30 degree north to 60 degree south. Actually, this region have an impact, particularly equator and tropic region, we have impact of trade winds, easterlies. So, first statement is wrong, this one word, if they have given it as N, so obviously it is correct, but they have given southern latitude, so it is wrong. The moist air mass that cause winter rains in northwestern India are part of westerlies. See, actually, uh, from Mediterranean region, there is one important jet stream called subtropical westerly jet stream. So, actually, it carries extra tropical cyclone from Mediterranean Sea towards Indian subcontinent. When these extra tropical cyclone enters Indian subcontinent, it gives rainfall, particularly to the northwestern part of India. We call that particular fact as western disturbances. So, in India, two regions experience winter rainfall. One, it is northwestern part of India, particularly due to western disturbances. And second, it is southern part of India, Tamil Nadu and coastal Andhra Pradesh due to the influence of northeastern monsoon and cyclones. So, this second statement, it is correct. So, 20 option B, B for Bombay. First statement is wrong. Second statement is correct. 21. Consider the following statements. Jet stream occur in the northern hemisphere. See extreme statement. You can eliminate this option. Jet streams are both present in northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So, first option can be eliminated. Second, only some cyclones develop an eye. See, actually, if a cyclone have greater than 119 kilometer per hour, so generally that cyclones forms I, I region, center low pressure region. But uh, if the velocity, wind velocity is very less, I region is not well developed. So, second statement, it is correct actually. So, third statement, temperature inside the eye of a cyclone is nearly 10 degree Celsius lesser than the surrounding. We know that actually, consider this is tropical cyclone, I region. So, I region have high temperature and low pressure. So, I region is a low pressure system. So, it has comparatively higher temperature than the surrounding region. So, third option is definitely wrong. So, option it is C. Very simple. From the surrounding region, temperature increases towards the eye. If you, uh, if you take pressure from the surrounding region, pressure decreases towards the eye. Temperature increases towards the eye, pressure decreases towards the eye. So, we need to know this basic fact, it is very important. 
Okay, so Z stream occur in northern hemisphere, it is false, it also in southern hemisphere. Only some cyclones develop an I, yes, it is exactly true. One second, yes, it is exactly true. If the wind speed is greater than 119 km per hour, we, we have proper development of I. The temperature inside the eye of a cyclone is nearly 10 degree Celsius lesser, no, it has higher temperature. So, third statement is also wrong. So, 21 option C, 22. In the South Atlantic and Southeastern Pacific region, in tropical latitude, cyclone does not originate. What is the reason? See, this is very important question. So, most of the most of us choose this option. Uh, sea surface temperatures are low because of cold ocean currents. Yes, it is true. But the exact answer, even according to UPSC's official key, it is option B. Intratropical convergence zone, ITC is it? seldom occurs in this region because of low sea surface temperature itc is it mostly it will be in equator or north of equator so it seldom occurs in the south of equator so they have asked the south atlantic and southeastern pacific region so itc is it generally it is not present in south of equator due to low sea surface temperature uh, so uh, this is an important factor why cyclones does not originate in uh, South Atlantic and Southeastern Pacific region. So, 22 option B. Coriolis force and absence of land, it is not a factor. Coriolis force is exactly the same as Northern Hemisphere. Absence of land is not a major impact. So, 23. On the planet Earth, most of the fresh water exists as ice caps. We have discussed the same question before. Out of the remaining fresh water, the largest proportion. After ice caps and glaciers, out of the remaining fresh water, the largest proportion exists as ground water. So, 23 option C. Already I have given data. So, 23 it is option C. 24. Why are dew drops not formed on a cloudy night? So, consider this a surface. When there is cloudy night, dew drops are generally not formed. What is the reason? Clouds absorb the radiation released from the earth surface. Cloud reflect back earth radiation. The earth surface would have low temperature on cloudy nights. Clouds deflect the blowing wind. So, answer it is option B. Earth reflect back the radiation which is emitted uh, from the earth surface. That is the exact answer. Clouds reflect back the earth radiation. That is answer. Particularly for dew drops, we need clear sky. This is important, clear sky, um, less wind and a high relative humidity. These are some of the factors which creates dew drops. So, first important factor, we should have a clear sky. But if it have a cloudy night, so obviously it, it hinders dew drops formation. Okay, so 24 option B, B for Bombay, 25. During a thunderstorm, a thunder in the sky is produced by meeting of cumulonimbus, uh, lightning that separates nimbus, uh, violent upward movement of air and water particles. Actually, the thunder uh, due, due to lightning, the air in the surrounding region expands and this creates sound waves. So, that is the source for thunderstorm. So, in this option, no statement is correct. So, none of the option, it is option D. It is initially believed meeting of cumulonimbus clouds in the sky, it is the reason for thunder, but it is not the exact fact. Due to lightning, due to the increase in temperature and pressure, the air molecules get expanded, which creates sound waves called thunder. So, that is the exact answer. So, expansion of air molecules, expansion of surrounding air molecule, that is the exact answer. So, 25 option D. 26. Again, El Nino, La Nina concepts. Recent question. La Nina is suspected to uh, have caused the recent floods in Australia. How is La Nina different from the El Nino? So, we, we need to know the difference between El Nino and La Nina before. So, La Nina is characterized by unusually cold ocean temperature in equatorial Indian Ocean. See, actually we know that El Nino and so El Nino and La Nina, it is due to the sea surface temperature variation in Pacific Ocean, not in Indian Ocean. So, the first statement it is wrong. So, 26, first statement it is wrong, whereas El Nino is characterized by unusually warm ocean temperature in the equatorial Pacific. Okay, but La Nina, it is not in Indian Ocean, it is Pacific. El Nino has adverse effect on the southwest monsoon. 
okay but lanina has no effect on monsoon it is also false lanina have positive impact on monsoon we experience more than average rainfall during lanina period southwest monsoon particularly el nino el nino period there is a less than average rainfall during southwest monsoon so el nino has an adverse impact but also lanina have positive impact on monsoon rainfall so second statement it is also wrong so option d so 26 option d both the statement is uh, wrong it is indian it is given as indian ocean that is false and it has adverse effect but lanina also have an impact so it is again extreme statement so okay so 26 option d 27 with reference to iod we can expect these kind of questions again el nino iod so these factors we can expect repeatedly because it is in current affairs it has a long term impacts so obviously we have to focus i with reference to iod sometime mentioned in news while forecasting indian monsoon which of the following statements are correct iod phenomena indian ocean dipole is characterized by a difference in sea surface temperature yes it is true between tropical western indian ocean and tropical eastern pacific see, see you can see the same pattern like before so actually iod is a phenomena difference in sea surface temperature between indian ocean for example consider this is arabian sea as a western pole eastern indian ocean as the eastern pole so it is the difference in sea surface temperature between western pole and eastern pole we consider it as iod positive iod na western pole will have warmer waters eastern pole will have cold waters negative iod na western pole will have cold waters eastern pole will have warm waters so it is confined to indian ocean it is not related to pacific so one first option is definitely wrong second option an iod phenomena can influence an el nino impact on the monsoon actually even though monsoon for example we'll consider el nino el nino have a negative impact on monsoon we have discussed it before if we have positive iod as i have mentioned positive iod na western pole will have warmer waters if we have positive iod even it can negate the effect of el nino so if there even if there is an el nino during positive iod we will get above average rainfall or good rainfall during southwest monsoon season so second statement iod phenomena can influence yes it can definitely influence so option it is b b for bombay so 27 option b 28 what could be the main reason for the formation of africa and eurasian desert belt see generally three important conditions for desert formation one it is subtropical high pressure belt and second it is offshore offshore winds third it is cold ocean currents three most important reason they have given it is located in the subtropical high pressure cell it is correct it is under the influence of warm ocean currents actually as i have mentioned third condition it is under the influence of cold ocean current we have deserts actually warm ocean current generally creates rainfall due to high evaporation so 28 second statement is wrong first statement is correct so 28 option a if you need an example for example africa saharan desert saharan desert forms due to canary current so consider this is africa sahara and desert forms due to canary current which is the cold ocean current so cold ocean current have an impact for example if you take uh, namib desert it is bengula current so cold ocean current again so cold ocean current is the important factor so 28 option a one only 29 which of the following is the characteristic uh, characteristic feature of tropical savanna region savanna region you also learn about sudan type of climate it is in your gc liang sudan type of climate is very important so which one of the following is the uh, characteristic climate of tropical savanna region rainfall throughout the year actually it is equatorial region we experience rainfall throughout the year a uh, rainfall in winter only generally in med in mediterranean climate uh, we will have rainfall during winter okay so extremes are dry season no it is not true so it is, has definite dry and a definite wet season that is the exact fact so 29 option d is the correct answer so rainfall throughout the year it is equatorial climate wet equatorial climate rainfall in winter particularly mediterranean climate due to the influence of westerlies so definite dry and wet season is correct 30 climate is extreme rainfall is scanty 
and the people used to be nomadic herders. The above statement best describes. Say actually you can eliminate tundra and prairie easily, but you may stuck with two options: African savanna and Central Asian steppe. Uh, both have extreme. Uh, say actually African savanna also have uh, nomadic people. Central Asian steppe is also have nomadic people. But climate uh, rainfall is not scanty in African savanna. African savanna receive around moderate uh, rainfall, so it is not scanty. And climate, uh, yes, it has diurnal variation. But here, according to this statement, in this above statement, Central Asian steppe, it is the exact answer. So, 30 option B. For example, Kyrgyzstan, there are many nomadic herders, Kyrgyz. So that that is the exact answer. So, 30 option B. So, particularly you focus on tropical grassland, savanna, temperate grassland, steppe, prairie, we can expect similar kind of question. So, 13 option B, 31, the seasonal reversal of wind is the typical characteristic of reversal of winds, you know that is very easy question, it is monsoonal climate, 31 option C. But for example, if you take Indian Southwest, South Asia monsoon. Actually, during southwest monsoon, we have a uh, wind movement from sea to land, but during northeastern monsoon, that is during southward movement of sun, there is a reversal in wind direction, that is from land to sea. So, southwest monsoon, sea to land, northeast monsoon, land to sea. So, monsoon climate, we have reversal of wind direction. So, 31 option C, 32. Each day is more or less the same. That is no major variation. The morning is clear and bright with a sea breeze, and suns climb high in the high sky, vertical sun rays. Heat mounts up, dark clouds form, then rain comes with the thunder and lightning, but rain is soon over. This explains actually, this explains equatorial climate, wet, e hot, wet equatorial climate, which experience convectional rainfall. Say actually in equator region, it experiences high vertical insulation, high insulation of sun rays, the air gets expanded, it rises above, it condenses and it forms clouds which results in daily rainfall. So, 32 option B is the correct statement. 33. Say uh, these question, uh, tropical savanna, um, Desert formation 28, tropical savanna, nomadic herders that is Central Asian steppe, uh, the seasonal reversal of winds, then fifth statement hot wet equatorial climate. All these questions you can answer by reading second part of your GC Liang, Go Chung Liang. Second part they have discussed the various climate pattern. If you read that basic uh, vegetation and climate, we can answer most of these questions. So, okay, so five questions. We can expect similar question in upcoming years also. So, 33, consider the following statement, high clouds primarily reflect solar radiation and cool the surface, low clouds have high absorption of infrared radiation, high clouds, low clouds, low clouds have high absorption of infrared radiation emanating from the earth surface and thus cause warming effect. Actually, it is reverse. Actually, high clouds uh, on the it reflect actually low clouds because it is very thick, it can reflect back the solar radiation. It has high albedo effect actually. That is why equatorial region, even though it experiences high insulation, it has less salinity compared to the northern part of equator because uh, equator region have cl thick cloud cover which have high albedo effect that can reduce the insulation to certain extent. So, thick clouds, low clouds is very thick which can reflect solar radiation and cool the earth surface. But high clouds have high absorption capacity, it is very thin uh, absorption of infrared radiation emanating from the surface and thus cause warming effect. So, it is the reverse. Uh, so, 33 option D, neither 1 nor 2. Okay, so, high clouds are thin, second option, low clouds are thick, high albedo effect high albedo effect which can cool the earth surface. So, 33 option D, neither one nor two. 34, this question is not proper, we will discuss it later. 35, with reference to uh, ocean mean temperature, which of the following statement are correct? 
OMT is measured up to the depth of 26 degree Celsius isotherm. Isotherm, you know, imaginary line joining the same temperature points, which is 129 meters in the southwestern Indian Ocean. OMT collected during January March can be used using assessing whether the amount of rainfall in monsoon will be less or more than a certain long term mean average. Okay. See, actually, it is current affairs based question at that year. Uh, there is a one uh, current affairs uh, in newspaper. Actually, IIT M Pune, Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology Pune, actually evolved uh, found found this particular studies ocean mean temperature based prediction. Actually, initially we generally predict monsoon by snow cover in Tibet or some other facts, particularly sea surface temperature. By studying sea surface temperature, we predict monsoon, whether we will have average monsoon or above average or less than average monsoon. Generally, uh, we will study about sea surface temperature. But what is the problem with sea surface temperature? Na? Uh, it can be influenced by many factors. For example, a wind, inflowing wind can alter sea surface temperature or ocean currents can alter sea surface temperature or anthropogenic reasons can impact sea surface temperature. So, its success rate is comparative less in predicting monsoon. So, they have developed a new study called ocean mean temperature study from the surface for example, from the surface at a certain depth in 26 degree Celsius in isotherm 26 degree they study mean temperature and they predict uh, Indian monsoon whether we will have average monsoon or less than average or greater than average. But the fact is that they have given 129 meter, but actually it is around 59 meter. It is not 129 meter, but it is very difficult kind of question. If you do not know the question, we may know about OMT, but these kind of numbers we may most often we end up in wrong side. So, if you do not know exactly, do not attend these kind of question because it will backfire. Because if you do not know exactly the data, do not take a raw guess for this kind of question, better skip this question because we have negative marks obviously. So, first statement is wrong, second statement it is correct. So, option B. So, 35 option B, 36. Consider the following factors, which of the above factors influence ocean currents? Very basic question, actually this year mains also they have asked the question what are the factors which influence ocean currents. So, we can expect this question again. So, consider the following factors, rotation of earth, air pressure and wind, density of ocean water have an impact. For example, rotation of earth creates uh, equatorial currents from west to east, uh, air pressure and wind definitely have an impact, hot wind and cold wind mix up ocean water which may have an impact. Density of ocean water, it is also have an impact particularly between equator to polar region. So, a revolution of earth actually have no role in the ocean current uh, formation. So, fourth option is wrong. So, option it is 1, 2 and 3, but very good question. We can expect this question again in mains also. 37. What explains the eastward flow of equatorial counter current? See actually earth rotates from west to east. So, actually the water get piled up in the eastern side. So, equatorial currents generally move from west east to west direction. I will repeat the point. So, due to the rotation of earth from west to east, water get piled up in one region. So, equatorial current, north equatorial current, south equatorial current move from east to west. So, again water pile up in some region. So, this convergence of equatorial current creates a new current called equatorial counter current. So, the exact answer it is the convergence of two equatorial current. First, we have to know equatorial currents forms due to the rotation of earth from west to east. So, due to the convergence of equatorial current, equatorial counter current is formed. So, that is the exact answer. This is very good question, very important question. So, regarding ocean currents, if there is a question instead of uh, equatorial counter current, if they ask equatorial current, it is rotation of earth that creates equatorial current formation, but the question is equatorial counter current. So, 37, 38. Tides occurs in the ocean and sea due to which of the following? Gravitational force of sun, gravitational force of moon, centrifugal force of earth. See, so, consider this is earth. Gravitational force of sun, moon will have an impact which can create high tide. At the same time, Newton's third law for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So, there is centrifugal force which acts in the opposite side. So, three reasons is correct. So, 38 option D, D for Delhi. 
38 option D 39 uh, actually this question is repeated we have discussed ocean mean temperature and we have discussed uh, factors influence ocean currents and we have discussed equatorial counter current also and now we have discussed tides. So, these four questions are repeated so just we are skipping. In tropical ozone the western sections of oceans are warmer than the eastern section owing to the influence of trade winds. Say consider in tropical temperate region, tropical region, temperate region, tropical region we have the influence of trade winds. So, trade winds are easterlies from east to west direction, westerlies are west to east direction. So, trade winds a region in tropic region eastern uh, there due to the influence of trade winds western section of oceans are warmer yes it is true due to the influence of trade winds it carry warm waters towards the coast. So, consider in oceanic perspective western section of oceans is warmer due to the influence of trade winds from west uh, uh, trade winds from east to west easterlies. In the temperate zone, westerly make the eastern section of oceans warmer than the western section. Yes, it is true. See, consider this is the path of westerlies. It is moving from west to east. So, it carry warm waters towards the eastern coast of the ocean. So, both statement is correct. So, option it is C. Very important question, very technical question. So, 43 option C. I will repeat the point tropical region trade wind impact trade wind move from east to west. So, it carries warm water towards the western coast of ocean. It is in oceanic perspective not in land perspective. Westerly move from west to east it carries warm waters towards the eastern coast. So, eastern side of the oceans generally have warmer waters very important question. So, 43 option C and last question it is kind of current affairs environment and geography with reference to Indian laws about wildlife protection considering the following statements. See actually we have important act wildlife protection act 1972 according to wildlife protection act wild animals are the sole property of government as it is true. Second when a wild animal is declared protected such animal is entitled for equal protection whether it is found in protected areas or outside it can be a national park it can be a wildlife sanctuary or it can be outside the protected zone. Wild animals should be equally protected. It is also according to WPA. But can you read the state third statement? Apprehension of a protected wild animal becoming a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its capture or killing. So, it will be ultimate chaos. So, everyone everywhere there will be a risk of attrition between wildlife, uh, wild animals and human habitations and human uh, uh, cultivations uh, like farm, farm, farmlands and everything. So, if this is the cause if they can kill these kind of animals there will be absolute chaos. So, according to this act chief wildlife warden should permit killing of a particular animal. We have incident of tiger uh, there are some incidents. So, chief wildlife warden need to approve. So, it is not this statement this is wrong definitely. So, third statement it is wrong. So, option it is A 1 and 2. See uh, whatever may be the question. So, by simple applying of logic particularly for geography by applying of logic and by elimination method you can almost answer many of the question. It may look tough some of the technical questions, but if you apply basic logic and basic NCRT data we can eliminate most of the options plus you have to update with current affairs particularly map based reading. So, we have 3 months left, 2 and a half months left. So, we have adequate time particularly focused on map based questions. Okay. With this we will wind up today's session. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you.